Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at iTunes Match. So iTunes Match went live this week. It's a new service just in the US for now for $25 a year. And what happens is it takes your entire iTunes music collection and puts it in the cloud so you can access it from all your devices. Now this leaves open a lot of questions. Let me try to answer them. So first, what happens when you set it up? Well, you start off, you get a screen that looks like this, setting up iTunes Match. It has a bunch of information and then once you accept everything and pay the $25 through your iTunes account, it looks like this for a little while as it goes and figures out which music you've got on your Mac and whether or not it needs to upload it. So the basic idea is this. All the songs either get uploaded or matched. So matched means the song already exists in iTunes. It's a song that Apple sells. So instead of uploading it, it's just basically going to put a check mark next to that song for you saying that you own that song. If it's not in the iTunes database, then it will take your song, the version you have on your computer, and upload it to an iTunes matched server. So the end result is that all of your music is available in the cloud, whether it's a matched song or whether it's a song uploaded from your computer during this initial process. When you add new songs to iTunes, it'll do the same thing. It'll figure out whether it needs to match it or upload it. So if you rip a CD that you got, it will do the same thing. Now if you purchase a song from iTunes, it already knows, of course, that it's there. So it won't bother to do that check. It'll just know that it's a matched song. So this is what your iTunes library kind of looks like once you have iTunes Match turned on. Now I've got two columns here. You can see this first one here has this cloud and there's one called cloud status. By default just the cloud was there. If I go to view and, and view options I can turn on and off both of these iCloud download and iCloud status. They basically mirror each other. One's an icon and another's a word. So you can see um, for normal songs uh, I get either say matched, meaning it found it in iTunes and uh, it's basically matched with the higher quality version up there so it didn't have to upload it. I have uploaded which means it didn't find it up there so it uploaded my version of the song. Um, and sometimes I get different things. Like for instance if I go back to the top here I have some errors and I've got some non-eligibles like for instance three of these here are PDFs that were downloads with an album so that's not part of it. I've got some waitings here so these haven't completed yet for one reason or another. It even indicates a few duplicate files I've got so it's not going to upload those. I find that some of these like say the errors I can click on the cloud and I'll get a message here um, and I can actually control click on it and select Add to iCloud to try again. And for some of these it actually worked and I have far less errors now than I had before. Now what are the advantages? Well one small advantage is that if you had a song that was lower quality, say 128 kbps mp3, it's now going to be in iTunes Match as 256 kilobits per second AAC. So much higher quality. Another advantage, of course, is that you can easily access these songs from all of your devices. So for instance, if you have a Mac desktop, a Mac laptop, an iPhone or an iPad, turn on iTunes Match for all of those using the same account and now you can access your entire library on any of those devices. If a song isn't available locally on the device, it will look like it is and you can download that song and play it on that device. Even while you're not on your local Wi-Fi network, you can be halfway around the world. So now here I am on my laptop, on my MacBook Air, and I'm running iTunes and I've got iTunes Match turned on. Now most of this music was not on this laptop before, uh, but now that iTunes Match turned on I can see it all. Now you can notice that the little cloud icon there says it's not on this local machine, it is in the cloud. But I can play that music by just double clicking on it and what will happen is it will start to load it from iCloud and start to play it. Now once it's fully downloaded you can see a little progress bar there on the left, it's like a little circle, then it will be available on this machine locally and I'll see it uh, disappear. This icon will change. I know that I can play it at any time even if I'm not connected. Now I can select a bunch of songs like say an entire album and if I control click I get a download button there. So I can quickly say before uh, going out of range of the internet I can select a bunch of songs and download them here locally so that I've got them for travel. 
So this leaves open a lot of questions. One is what happens to your original songs? Well, they don't go anywhere. So if you have a lot of songs, say, on your internal drive or an external drive on your Mac and you do the iTunes Match thing, they're all still going to be there, all your original files. Well, what if you wanted to replace a song with the higher quality version of iTunes Match? You could delete it locally and then it will appear as a song in iTunes Match, not on your local machine, and then choose to download it. Then you'll get the higher quality song. Now how about storage costs? Well, there are none. This has nothing to do with the iCloud storage space that you have. So even if you're going to upload, say, a thousand songs that are not matched, this doesn't count against your iCloud storage and you won't even see it accounted for anywhere. Uh, it's part of your $25 fee. Now there is a 25,000 song limit and these include matched songs and songs that you've uploaded, but they don't include songs that were purchased in iTunes. Now what about metadata? Like if you've entered in some special information about a song or some lyrics or you've got your ratings and number of plays. Well that's all now in iTunes Match. So if you download a song to another device you'll have all that information. As it's not quite synced up if you download it on one device and you update it in the other it won't automatically update. But it is there in the cloud so you can pull a new version down and it will have all that metadata there. So essentially you can think of iTunes Match like sharing but sharing on more than just your local network because once you're set up in iTunes Cloud you can share wherever you are. So if you travel between home and work it's kind of ideal because you can do this and then on your iPhone or on your work Mac you can have access to all of your music that's in the cloud. So they are the basics. If you want to use iTunes Match you just have the very latest version of iTunes. You go into the store menu and turn on iTunes Match then it walks you through the process of paying for it and getting all set up. Now it's pretty early with it so we still have yet to hear whether or not there are some advantages and disadvantages that haven't yet been discovered. And of course Apple may be changing things and adding new features in the future. Hope you found this useful. Till next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.